Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website, doomandbloom.net, with over a thousand articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness. Together with my wife, Amy Alton, an advanced registered nurse practitioner, we are the authors of the Survival Medicine Handbook, now in its third edition. Also, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, The Layman's Guide, and the designer of an entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. Recently, we discussed some important basics about face masks, an important part of your defense against airborne viruses and bacteria. Influenza, coronavirus, and many other infectious diseases enter your body through your mouth and nasal passages, and a good supply of masks will provide you with an ounce of protection that's worth a pound of cure. Since many epidemic diseases affect medical personnel, it's imperative to make sure you know how to properly place a face mask. So today we're going to go over the procedure to achieve a tight protective fit. A proper seal is necessary to protect vulnerable areas like the nose and mouth. You're going to first clean your hands with soap and water or some kind of hand sanitizer before touching the mask at all. Then you're going to remove a mask from the package. Make sure there are no obvious tears or holes in either side of the mask. You need to determine which side of the mask is the top. The side of the mask that has a stiff bendable edge is the top. It's meant to mold to the shape of your nose. Determine which side of the mask is the front. The colored side of the mask is usually the front and should face away from you while the white side touches your face. If your face mask has ear loops like this one, what you're going to do is spread the mask open and press it to your face. Then place a loop around each ear. Then you're going to use both hands to press firmly on the nose piece. If you have a face mask with ties, which I actually don't have at the moment, what you're going to do is bring the mask to your nose level and then place the ties over the crown of your head and secure it with a bow. Then you'll take the bottom ties, one in each hand, and secure with a bow below the level of your ears. You'll pull the bottom of the mask over your mouth and chin to achieve a fit. Now face masks with bands, that I got. Most N95s will have elastic bands. What you will do is hold the mask in your hand with the nose piece at the top of the mask at your fingertips. You bring the mask to your nose and pull the top strap over your head so that it rests just over the crown. Then you're going to pull the lower strap over your head so that it rests at the nape of your neck below the level of your ears. Then you stretch it again and Voila. Next we're going to look at the excellent 1873 M mask. This particular brand recommends placing the bottom band under the fold so that both bands are clearly separated. So you see that they are indeed very clearly separated. Maybe a little easier to find than the previous mask that I just used. What you want to do is you want to bring the mask to your nose level and pull the top strap here over your head so that it rests over the crown. And then what you'll do is you'll find and take the bottom strap over your head so that it rests below the level of your ears. And there you have it. What you want to do is then stretch it so that it provides a proper seal. Whatever mask you use, you absolutely have to make a proper seal by pressing the nose piece of the mask with both hands so that it matches your face. You must then test the fit and seal of the mask by breathing in. A slight indentation should occur in the sides of the mask with inhalation. And air should not escape the mask when you exhale. So feel for that air coming out. If that's the case, it may be difficult to achieve a solid seal and good protection. By the way, facial hair may make it difficult to achieve a solid seal, so you might have to say goodbye to that snazzy goatee that I have. Oh boy, oh boy that means I'm going to lose my goatee there. What do you think of that? Crazy baby. Crazy baby. That would be bad. Now, how to safely remove a face mask. First off, the important thing is to avoid touching the front of the mask, which we have to assume is contaminated. Only touch the ear loops, ties, or bands. If you have a face mask with ear loops on, just hold both of the ear loops and gently lift and remove the mask. 
If you have a face mask with ties, untie the bottom row first, and then untie the top row and pull the mask away from you as the ties are loosened. You may see TV doctors with dirty masks hanging on their chest, but the front of that mask is contaminated. It is wrong. How about face masks with bands like the one I have on right now? What you want to do is you want to lift the bottom strap over your head like this and then pull the top strap, where is it? There it is, over your head and pull away. And you do it in such a way that you're not touching it with your hands. Then you dispose of the mask safely without touching the front and you clean your hands with soap and water or hand sanitizer. Your eyes are also important to protect as blood splatter and aerosol droplets can enter the body through the eyes. So you might want to have protective goggles. If this is the case, you want to place the protective goggles tightly over your eyes, adjust them so they're nice and tight. Some masks come with full face shields, as a matter of fact, that are built into the item. Uh, this one doesn't. So this one, what you would do is you would hold it and just place it over like this. The amount of personal protection gear depends on what kind of contagion that you're dealing with. The procedure, for example, when using coveralls is somewhat different, and the entire donning and doffing process is much stricter. It's important to know that different brands of personal protection gear have their own procedures, so when all else fails, read the instructions. You'll find more detailed instructions, by the way, on how to don and doff personal protection gear in our latest book, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, The Layman's Guide to Available Antibiotics in Austere Settings. Although the book talks mostly about bacterial disease and the antibiotics you can get to cure them, there's an entire section on personal protection gear and epidemic sick rooms. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. If you're concerned, by the way, about epidemic disease, please check out Nurse Amy's pandemic supplies and kits, just a part of her entire line at her store at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.